<laughs> oh, we're live. Yes. Okay. Hi. Hi. Welcome to the Mama Narwhal. And hey, it's A Ray. A Ray. Yes. Today, we're going to talk about IEPs. As you know, I have several special needs in my family and extensive issues. And so does A Ray here. So today, we're going to talk about. IEPs. Now, for those of you that aren't familiar, IEPs uh, are used by schools of all kinds to um, help those with, you know, disabilities or issues get an education, right? So it's supposed to level the playing field so that all kids have access to the same things, the same events, the same class materials. But when you have an IEP, they alter the material just a little bit so that student can be successful. Does that always work? No, it doesn't. Do schools always uphold that into that contract because it is a legal contract? No. Do parents do that? No, because things change. So today we're going to discuss IEPs and just a little bit of our own personal experiences and try to help you guys figure out what the best thing is to do. Now, are we actually experts on all this? Oh, no. Mm -mm. <laughs> I mean, I did it for two kids. I'm still not an expert. I've talked to experts and even experts say, yeah, we have all of this, but we don't know from year to year. Yep. And, you know, I, I know during uh, COVID, a lot, a lot of the things were changed. Mm -hmm. The, um, it, they weren't really rules, but they were, I think they were called memorandums yep. at the time. The department of education said, well, we don't need all of this stuff. So they just basically began rescinding them. Yeah. Did that cause problems for you and your kids? Or? Yeah. 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 It did. Yeah. I know it did for mine because it was just, you know, Oh, this worked, but now the schools can just not do what works and do whatever they want and say, well, we're meeting the bare minimum. Yep. How do you feel about schools meeting the bare minimum? It sucks. It does. It does. I mean, like, just blatantly. I mean, it, it sucks. Yeah. Uh, I've got two on an IEP. Mm -hmm. Well, my oldest, they actually kicked off an IEP. Really? <laughs> I didn't yep. think they could do that. Oh, they did. Did they give you, like, a legitimate reason? The teacher felt that she didn't need it anymore. But she did. And but, she still does. But that's not a legitimate reason according to the rules and laws. I mean. They fought me on it. Really? Yeah. So mm. she's on a 504 now. And that only covers medical. 504. Mm -mm. They, oh, really? Mm -mm. Okay. Nope. She's supposed to get extra help in class. Okay. But she doesn't. Huh. She's supposed to get like extra time, extra help. Yeah. But she doesn't get any. No. Well, a 504 from what I understand is just for basic medical that doesn't cover the educational or even behavioral needs. It's, mm -hmm. it's less robust. Yep. So I don't, yeah. But I didn't think that that was a legitimate, matter of fact, I've been told that that's not a legit, oh, the teacher says it. Mm -hmm. They wow. fought me. They fought me. Wow. But she goes to a county school. Okay. Okay. And they, they do things weird. Yeah. Well, and that's one thing I've noticed too. It, it varies from district to district. It does. And then sometimes, in a district, you'll get a great team. You'll get mm -hmm. good support and everything will go good. And then you jump to the conclusion of next year, it's going to yep. be the same. And then you just get smacked in the face and you're like, what are you doing? You know, why are yep. you doing this? And that's what gets me, mm -hmm. um, you know. So next school, did she just lose it this year then? The end of last year. End of last year. So are you going to try again next year, maybe with all new team or new I teachers? think I have to wait three years. Three years. Yep. Wow. Yep. And that requires more support at home mm -hmm. to get her through. Mm -hmm. Just mm. Well, she was on an IEP just for math. It wasn't for everything else, but she has, I mean, the math is ridiculous. Yeah. I mean, they've changed it all. Uh, yeah. We yeah. can't help her with it. Oh, wow. And it's just, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Um, it, and the way they change the curriculum mm -hmm. and then they expect our kids to keep up with it mm -hmm. because they switch overnight. You know, I, I know uh, my oldest in the middle and she was taught that common core stuff and I do it old school. Oh, yeah. I, and I still get the same answer. And they're like, well, how did you do that, mom? And I'm like, <laughs> and I show them the old school and they're like, well, this is so much easier. Yeah. 
except for my oldest. She was always into math and science. Yeah. So, you know, the more complex it was, the better she was at it. But uh, yeah, it just, it floors me that they act. And then they act like we don't know because we're parents. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, they have a job. They do other things. They don't have time to research. So mm-hmm. whatever we say, because we have the alphabet suit, they are automatically the experts. Yep. And there's, well, matter of fact, last week, I uh, I told his IEP person, I said, you know, just because you have an alphabet soup and you've done this job, I'm your equal. Mm-hmm. You, I I don't have to take this from you. Nope. And she got very quiet, mm-hmm. you know, and, and as many of you know, or, you know, those of you just joining us, uh, my son is homeschooled. Uh, Ping is his nickname for social media. And, uh, you know, I've given everybody nicknames yeah. for privacy. But uh, so, you know, I'm on the phone or texting yep. or something, you know, when something goes wrong. And I, I was actually gaslit Mm -hmm. and I didn't appreciate that. So I was reaching out and I've got to make some more phone calls this next week. But uh, we just, I didn't want to put up with it. And I told her, I'm your equal. Don't you talk to me like that. Don't you do this. And she just kept interrupting me over and over. And I'm like, okay, well, you have your say. I'll have mine. And then I threatened the fed. That's how bad it got. Oh yeah. And of course, you know, schools don't like it when you do that, but. That's their problem. Mm-hmm. My my concern is him. Yep. Their concern is the 80 some students they apply that umbrella to. Mm-hmm. That they get money for. Exactly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They get they get that extra money. And wherever our students go, their IEP money follows. Yes, it does. And uh, you know, it and that's unbelievable. I don't know, depending on the district and how many a students they have with special needs in it, it's it's not just individual students, it's the group. Mm-hmm. So the more disabled the student, the more money they get. Yep. And that's, yeah. that's to me, that's not, it's not right. It is, but at the same time, if they don't want to treat them good, we'll take our money and go elsewhere, mm-hmm. you know, and that's only yep. right. So it's just a sad thing. And then, like I said, with the Midland, before we started streaming, You know, they basically, and to her face, they called her those things Mm -hmm. and said, oh, you're never, you're never going to amount to anything. So go learn how to make friends. We're not going to give you an education. And then every time I tried to teach her life skills, it was, no, I don't need to know that mom. I need to go make friends. Mm -hmm. And now at the age she's at, which is adulthood, she can't do anything. But the thing is, she has had two jobs and the uh, first job you know, as everybody knows, did not work out. Mm-hmm. And he has since left the company. He walked out. Last really? Week. Yeah. Good. Yep. He, but now they're down to a total of four employees for two shifts. Really? Yep. That, that restaurant has pretty much tanked since I have, since she left. And she's like, that's okay. I like the new job. And she's actually learning more and doing more Good. Good. Um, as far as that, but it's a lot more tiring for her. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> but it's closer to the house and uh, she doesn't, she likes that. Mm-hmm. So what's your biggest pet peeve with uh, schools and how they do IEPs? Oh, just that they change them. Oh, okay. I mean, just literally they change them. Like if they feel like they just don't want to follow it, they just don't follow it. Yeah. And then there's no accountability. No accountability. Yeah. Unless uh-huh. we raise a stink and it shouldn't be that way. Oh, I've raised stinks oh, yeah. and it still, it's a fight. Yeah. It's a fight. It's and what what it gets me about that is I'm tired of fighting. Mm-hmm. I'm tired of fighting everybody, schools, society, all of everybody that just demands perfection. Yep. And then they're like, but we don't have to be perfect, but you guys do. You do, yep. And it's like, I'm sorry. I mean, for those of you that don't know, I'm a WYSIWYG person, as you can tell. I, you know, I'm attempting to open a business plus take care of everything here. And there's our days when... I just sit and I'm like, yep, this is what you're getting out of me today because I'm just mentally and physically yep. drained. And I know a right here knows exactly what I'm talking yep. about where you just stare at the wall and you're like, yep, I paint drying. It looks awful pretty. <laughs> Somebody <laughs> else done paint it, you know? I mean, yeah, it's bad. But and, yeah, you know, I'm sitting here doing all the talking. Feel free to interrupt. No, me do, you're, do you're fine. All. I've not done like a collab at all. So this is like <laughs> my first time doing a collab. Well, we'll just collab away. Yes. Because, you know, we, here, I will show you our collab partner. Oh, wait a minute. <laughs> oh, her head is stuck. Her name is Flufina, everybody. And she's my friend. 
Mm-hmm. I have other friends that will be introduced at a later date, but Ufina is our friend today. She kind of looks like my dog. Well, the based on the skeleton, when she stands up, she's almost the size of like a German Shepherd yeah. too, or a Labrador. She's pretty big. She does. She kind of looks like my dog, yeah. just without skin and hair. Well, and the good news is it's a small food bill. We don't have to feed her a lot. Well, that's real. And the cats, uh, uh, the oldest Squeaky, he'll come and lay and cuddle up with Aww. her. And it's really cute because he's like, oh, I love you, dog. I'm like, that's not a dog, but okay. You, okay. you do, you do. Well, at least he doesn't like put the cat in his mouth like my <gasps> dog does. Oh, my gosh. He carries my cat around like this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. He tried to do it to Millie, but Millie was too small. Yeah. Yeah. Was he a little gentler with her? A little bit, yeah. I think he knew she was yeah. sick. Yeah. That's the cool thing about animals when you mm-hmm. have pets, you know, when they grow up together. Because um, I had a dog. His name was Dakota. And when Squeaky and his sister were little, I mean, like, little, mm-hmm. uh, Dakota was very gentle with him. Mm-hmm. But he was a 110-pound lap. I mean, his yeah. was fat and big. But he also had Rottweiler in him. Uh, so he had that big bulky to mm-hmm. his chest. But yet. When Squeaky and Smokey were little, they'd mm-hmm. lay on him in the knee, and then they'd like bat his ear, yeah. and he'd just lay there and look at me like, "Mom, what's what? You better stop this," you know. And but they grew up together, and they very rarely fought. Um, Dakota never really carried him around, and then, you know, but he was always so gentle. He was like a gentle giant. The girls would paint his toenails, Aww. and then when the middle one was little, she, we had her stickers. Mm -hmm. And of course they ended up everywhere to the point I had, because we didn't know in the house yet. We were still a landlord and I was like scrubbing them off. And I would turn around and Dakota would have them on his forehead and his (laughs) nose, you know, on both cheeks. And she goes, okay. And I'm like, yeah, that's pretty. And Dakota (laughs) would be going, Oh my God, are you serious? So, you know, you know how they look at you at the top of their eyes. Uh And uh, so, yeah, she, and he's like, that's pretty. So I'd be like, how about we clean up the dog? And she goes, okay. So she'd mm-hmm. stick them all, right? Real gentle. Because she didn't know, oh, stick them on hard. Yeah. And then she'd put them on his belly. And I'm, she's like, I, I cleaned up his face. Okay. And then he'd lay there with some, <laughs> take a nap with stickers on his belly or whatever. And, you know, he was just, but he was big. And he, there was one time he actually attacked a dude. And oh, he wow. tried to break into mm-hmm. the house we lived in before. And uh, he took a big chunk out of his jeans. Even the police were scared of him. They, they knocked on the door and said, could you please put your Rottweiler in the house? And I'm like, I own a Labrador. What Rottweiler? And they're like, this big dog. It was all they heard was yeah. a market. And they wouldn't go around the corner to get the guy. And it was so funny. And and I was like, so I brought him through the house. And they all started laughing at themselves. They're like, oh, well, okay, we'll go get the guy. And he you know, hung out in the backyard in a dark spot. And they went back there and got him. And then for 45 minutes, they played fetch with the Dakota. Oh, my goodness. They had him in the car, and they were all, one of them were talking, and a couple of them grabbed tennis balls and throwing his tennis balls and giving him treats. And I'm like, oh, my God. <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, you just, you didn't mess with him. But he was as yep. friendly as could be if you were a good person. Yep. And I miss him. He's been gone several years now. And the kids are like, well, we need a new dog. No, we don't. <laughs> no, we have, we have Felicina now. She's, she's good. We're talking about getting another dog for Remy. Yeah. Yeah. Because he's wild. Oh, great. It's wild. Get him a Labrador. We've been talking about it. Someone had an English Mastiff they were just giving oh, away. Really? Three years old. Oh. I'm I'm mm. thinking about it. Yeah. I'm thinking. Yeah. So Because you need something calm. You know, you need that. Oh, and Mastiffs are calm. Yeah. yeah. Gentle giants. Yeah. I was, I was thinking about trying to get a dog that was similar to Dakota. You know, the calmer, mm-hmm. um, you know. That way, if things got tense here or things yeah. went kind of were going south and everybody was, everything was button heads is what I call it. When yeah. he, when his stuff has a problem and then he's kind of picks mm-hmm. up on it and then I call it button heads. Yeah. And it's, you know, but I thought maybe a dog would help all of us out. Mm-hmm. You know, the cats are amazing. I mean, they'll climb in our laps when we're tense. They'll, you know, do whatever. Um, Squeaky just meows at us to get off his lawn and. He don't understand that that's my lawn, <laughs> you know, but he's 19 years old and that puts him at 92 in human years. Oh yeah. Yeah. So he's pretty much whatever yeah. he is, he's going to be. And uh, he'll be 20 next July and that'll put him at 96. So, Aww. and he's still plugging away. He's still yeah. the cranky old man that he is, and, you know? Um, and then junior, the other cat, I don't, I don't know. He runs into walls. <laughs> he eats French fries. Like French fries. Yeah, we'll break them up and drop them. And he'll eat. My cat eats like lettuce and rice. Really? Yeah. Wonder why. He thinks he's a dog. 
He's confused. Yeah. I think mine just thinks he's something other than a cat. Maybe a groundhog or a ferret or something. Feral ferret. Oh, I got a laugh out of Ping. <laughs> Ping is sitting in. Ping is our audience today. Everyone. Mm-hmm. He's just kind of chilling with the switch and got YouTube on here. And my lovely, lovely business area here that just explodes. I, you know, they always say there's a fine line between creativity and neatness. And, well, that's the genius mess. And that's what this is. You know, because I'm a genius. But I'm too... Long home. <laughs> so, well, we don't have anybody in the chat, so that's okay. That's all right. That's okay. I don't even know. And we have no viewers. Hey, but we're all right. We're all right. That's all right. It'll get posted. That's right. And then we can do it again in two weeks. Exactly. Exactly. We can just make this a weekly weekly mom session. <gasps> we got to come up with like a type. We do. Or it went on topics and stuff. Yeah, we can just sit here and plan this right now because you know, yeah. ain't nobody paying attention. Yeah. Well, maybe people will get on and tell us what they want. Exactly. That would be an idea. Guys, let us know. I do have a community tab. And or you can go over to Instagram, TikTok. 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 She's one she's newfangled. I'm not. I'm, I'm, I grow tomatoes and cucumbers. That's about as tick TikToky as I get. Um oh. TikTok, Facebook. I, I yeah, I, well, I do Facebook, but it's personal. I don't I do I do have some bordering. Um yeah. She's she's popular. See, I should be the one. She should be the one running this. I should be the one nervous. She's a famous. I, I wouldn't there. say that I'm famous on TikTok. But yeah, you are. I mean, oh, ten thousand followers. That, that's kind of that's pretty famous. And I watched some of your <laughs> stuff there. Not Chuck, and you read my comments. I'm, oh my god, I'm a little bit facetious there. You know that that was my word of the day for yesterday's gaming stream. <laughs> you missed that. Uh, but I do have sixty two followers, and I'm very happy with that. Well, yeah. I'm very you happy. You gotta start somewhere. Well, yeah. And a, a lot of times, or for my gaming streams, even, it's uh, the Midland and one of our family friends. That's it. Yeah. So I just get on there and I'm like, okay, this is what we're going to do. And I die and I mess things up and everything else. But, you know, I have fun. They have fun. Yeah. We talk. That's, That's all it. that matters. Yeah. I'm not, I, and then everybody's like, oh, well, you need this big microphone. And you, no, I don't. I need a camera and mm-hmm. something I can make. Make gestures yep. in front of. Other than that, I don't need no fancy studio. That's, I mean, yeah, but I like to have a clean. You know, but you know what? I got, I got friends. I bought. I got, yeah. I got a ray. I, we're good. So let's see. What else can we talk about here? Um. Oh, what kind of activities do you, your family like to do outside of the home? I'm not trying to be nosy. I'm just no, trying to no, no, no. You're fine. It, it's hard. Because of my son. Yeah. Getting him to be able to do certain things. He does bowl. Oh. We can't get him to bowl. Nice. We can get him to bowl. Yeah. yeah. You like bowling? Yeah. 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 We should do a bowling trip. We should. Because it's victory right there. It's like right there. We can get them bumper lines. We could live stream that too. Oh, <gasps> well, yeah. I've been working on trying to do other live streams. We can. Stuff. Yeah. Because I got a tripod. Yes. I got. I got two very. I used to be a professional photographer. Did you? Yeah, I mean to the point I was I was selling for good chunks of money. Really? Oh yeah, yeah. Well, it's good to know. Yeah. You still do pictures? <laughs> yeah, actually, I, when I can, yeah, when I can get everybody on the same level for thirty minutes, and I can be like, okay, I'm only going ten feet away now. <laughs> you know, but uh, off and on, yeah, 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 for the right people, and the, you know, I don't, I don't worry about the money now because. One thing this journey has taught me is that, yeah, money is a great help, mm-hmm. but making it the center of everything, it, it ain't worth it. No, they're worth it. Yeah. Even if you get frustrated with them and you want to go, mm-hmm. mm, you know, give mommy five minutes, yep. you know, it's, it's, that's what's worth it, you know? Yeah. And uh, so, we do try to live very simple lives. Yeah. I know what you see behind me. You're probably thinking, oh my gosh, that's not simple. But 90% of it is papers because I, mm-hmm. what I'm trying to do, and I've kind of kept this secret, but I might as well announce this now. I'm in the process. My business is going to, I do special needs things. Mm-hmm. And that takes paper because not oh, yeah. everybody, I, a lot of them, yeah, they they do screens. Mm-hmm. But that's only because that's what they were taught from the beginning. Yep. I do physical things, things they can touch. Mm-hmm. And I do memory sets and uh, pre-K stuff. 
um, because I learned all of that. And about, I don't know, three years into the Midlands journey, the Lord said, hey, this is what you need to do. Yep. And I've been trying, I've been trying to open this business for 17 years. <laughs> I get so far and then something else happens and that requires my attention for a long span. Mm -hmm. And then something else happens and then I get back to it for a year or so and then I get so far and the next thing you know, there it is. Yeah. You know, and it just, but I've been plugging away. And now it's gotten to where I can make product. Yeah. <laughs> and I have a website that's kind of wonky right now, but I'm making progress. Mm -hmm. And that's the goal. It's not about the money. It's about, can I help this family with something mm -hmm. that most people are denying them? Oh, yeah. You know, and that's and that's the biggest. And a lot of families aren't vocal about it. No, not, I, I don't. I think in some part because they're ashamed. But in other ways, I think it's just simply because they're in shock mm -hmm. because they see other families getting these monstrous resource things. Oh, yeah. And then they're struggling just as much, mm -hmm. but they're poor or they don't. I've actually been told we we were denied several times because we don't fit the picture. It's so ridiculous. Well, I asked them what they meant. We're not we're not advertisement worthy. So we were denied. That's wrong. Well, yeah, that is wrong. And of course I stood there in shock and I was like, well, what does it matter what we look mm -hmm. like? Our needs are real. And they're like, but we can't use your child. We can't use your family in our advertisement. And I'm like, well, that, uh, I was speechless. Mm -hmm. And that takes a lot to make me speechless. <laughs> I was told, as I, and this was kind of an abusive thing because it stuck with me. But when I was a kid, my dad told me, you started talking at 13 months old and didn't shut up. Shut up, you know. And I just, I can't. There, I, I don't know. I probably have ADHD and I don't know it. Well, I know I do know it. But anyway, <laughs> moving on. Um, but yeah, it's, you know, it's just that constant, mm -hmm. you know. And then the schools. Oh, we have these resources. Okay, good. This is what my kid needs for to help me support him. Oh. No, sorry, not for you. We're going to give it to this person yep. over here. And I'm like, but I need support. Yep. Or, I, you know, me as a mom, I, me as a caregiver. And they're like, have you ever been told, oh, you chose this? You know what? I think when Brett was little, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I did get that one time. Yeah. Oh, I, that's a constant for me. Well, you yeah. chose to be the mom. You chose. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I chose to be a mom, but I didn't choose the rest of this. Well, yeah, I didn't choose... For him to have a disability. Yeah, I didn't wake up one day and said, I think my kid's going to have hemophilia. Mm -hmm. I didn't wake up like that. No. You know, I didn't wake up and say, yeah, moderate autism sounds good today. I think yeah. we'll run with that one. I think this will be fun. Yeah. It'll be a new adventure. <laughs> sounds like a good time. Exactly. I yeah. mean, you know, and then when, the other thing is, for us, I push for the specific diagnosis. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of a complicated reason. But this way... It's not a blanket terminology. Oh, yeah. Because when they switched autism to AD, ASD, mm -hmm. a lot of kids lost that. And they lost all of their supports. Mm -hmm. And that didn't make the disease go away. That just made it easier for somebody to write down a billing code. Yep. And I thought that was the dumbest thing in the world. Mm -hmm. I thought, why are you going to deny these thousands of kids mm -hmm. that have gotten all these supports that they've gotten used to, that have made them successful in life, or even at their... Uh, and you're going to say, well, I can't write down a number eight. I can write down a seven, so we're going to change it. Yep. So it's, it's and, and everybody's like, well, that's all in your head. Nobody's against you. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry, what planet are you on? Because I live here. I mean, Mars isn't colonized yet. We're working on it, though. We're working on it. Yeah, and we're going to go destroy Mars's environment, and then we're going to work on the moon. You know they're trying to put a thing on the moon? Maybe we should just go to Mars. Maybe we should. I'm kind of thinking about it. Yeah. Because then we could actually build our own little community, our own little habitat. Yeah. The kids would do better. Yeah, they would. Yeah, because we'd be in charge. Probably safer. That's true. Very true. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'd have to do our own Walmart thing. But I think we could do that. I mean, I think we already kind of know what stores and stuff are. So right. we'd just be like, okay, yeah. let's do it. And, but, well, in between the two of us, we could feed them. I mean, That's true. You said you were throwing something in the crock pot. What did you throw in? We forgot to ask. Cube steak. <gasps> we like. Yeah. Do you like cube steak? Oh, uh, we've had it once or twice. Uh, we, we like pot roast. 
Oh my gosh, yes. I haven't done a pot roast in a while. Mm. We do pot roast once a month at least. Mm-hmm. We try to. Um, we do salmon every other week. He likes seafood. Oh, I'm yeah. allergic to seafood. Oh no. Well, yeah. I know. I like shrimp, but I can't have it. He just tried shrimp last week and he That's ate good, isn't he it? ate the whole box. My mom wanted to try shrimp. Because I've never had shrimp before. Mm-hmm. And I wanted at least one or two pieces. It was just some breaded stuff. Oh, yeah. All these. And uh, he said there ain't the whole box. And he's like, oh, mom, I'm sorry. I forgot. To. I was like, it's all right. <laughs> so shrimp. and But, yeah, he's. I pushed. They said he was autistic. Well, I knew he was autistic. Did you did you have that feeling, too, that when you were. No, everybody else told me. Everybody else. Yeah. Because uh, I compared Brett and Bree. Okay. Because they're twins. Oh, yeah. And Brie was just so much more advanced. Okay. And I was like, well, she's a girl. Girls develop yeah. quicker. That old wives' tale thing, yeah. 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 She was walking, talking, doing all this, and Brett started to do all that. Okay. And then he just stopped. Oh. Like, he was talking, and then he yeah. just reverted. Hmm. So, it was actually, I hate to admit this, was the kids' uh, dad's mom that said, you need to get him checked out. Yeah. Yeah. And they... Then you have to do any tests. They just looked at him and realized, yeah, realized, yeah, yeah. Well, the journey with I'll start with the middle and the journey with the middle one was she'll outgrow it. When she was born, she didn't cry. She just laid there, didn't you know? Babies wiggle and get you know wiggle and move because they're stretching, right? She didn't do that. She just like a limp fish, she just laid there and then stared. Her apgar was fine. Her res- other response, you know, like her little they tested her multiple times mm-hmm. to make sure, and everything came back fine. And I was like, okay, but there's something wrong. I mean, yep. within minutes of me just looking, I was like, there's something wrong. Because, you know, she's the middle child of the three. And, I mean, I did the comparing thing to her older sister. Yeah. And she didn't even do anything close to the oldest. The beginning, she did not do a thing. And that's what tipped me that minute. I was yep. like, there's something there. And they're like, oh, no, some babies do this. And I was like, okay. But my mom gut. You know, this is my yeah. second. My mom gut. So... We talk, I, I worked with her and did certain things, and she, uh, sorry, I had to give an up, off camera <laughs> thumbs up there to a switch charger. Uh, mm-hmm. the, the longer, the older she got, mm-hmm. and then at seven days old, she just stopped eating. She would suck for a few minutes on the bottle, maybe an ounce at seven days old, and then just fall asleep. I have to wake her up. So I took her to a local big name pediatrician that shall remain un- unnamed on the south side. Oh, I know who that is. Uh-huh. And they, they basically said, well, let's wait six more weeks. And I said, we're not going to wait because she was seven pounds and blank ounces, right? She was down to four pounds and some ounces in just mm-hmm. three days. I was like, we're not going to wait for six weeks. And they're like, well, you seem to have an anger issue. I said, no, I've got a dying baby issue. You're the one with the issue. Mm-hmm. I said, you got two options. I will go through the ER because at the time we had the two hospitals mm-hmm. uh, on the other end. And I said, you got two choices. I'll go through the ER, tell them what you said. I'll have an evaluator. And I'll know she'll end up in the NICU. I said, or you could call ahead, have us a bed waiting, and then she'll go into the NICU. And we'll figure this out. Yeah. On the way home, I had a, vo- a voicemail. Because we didn't have cell phones back then. And uh, on the way home, there was a voicemail on our answer machine that says she has a bed waiting at the NICU. And then children's services showed because I had an anger issue because I refused to let my child die. Because that place told me, oh, we're just going to wait. Mm-hmm. You don't wait when a baby can't eat. Nope. You know what? She has no jaw muscles. They didn't develop. Aww. So she struggled to eat from yeah. a regular nipple. We put her on preemie nipples. By the time she got home, that kid weighed 10 pounds. Mm-hmm. I mean, she was, but she was still the floppy fish. She was still yeah. there, but she was eating. So we don't know if that lack of nutrients those first several days caused it or if it was just something genetic because of other family members. We're not real sure. But as time went on, I kept saying, there's something wrong. There's something. Oh, she'll be fine. She'll outgrow it. And I'm like, yeah, no, there's finally what I got somebody. Listen, I had a friend that went into the uh, PT and the physical therapy industry Mm -hmm. and I got her to listen and uh, bless her. I say, I see her every once in a while and I still give her a big old hug, Mm -hmm. but she evaluated her and she said, there is something wrong. I, I, but because of her PT credentials, she couldn't say what she couldn't do anything. And she said, my, she said, unless I get an order from the pediatrician, we can't even help. Right. So I learned. I learned from her. I learned from Google. I learned from YouTube. And I taught my daughter how to walk, 
feed herself stack blocks. I taught her how to write and, you know, anything that I could teach her, I taught her. Yep. And then one day she just started talking. Just, it was little words. It was, you know, they were mispronounced because of the way her brain processes, yep. but you know, they were there. And uh, she failed her kindergarten entrance exam twice. Failed it. And they're like, well, she failed it twice, but we're going to go ahead and let her in. I'm like, okay, well, at least and she started at six. Got in there, and within two weeks, her kindergarten teacher called me and said, what's wrong with her? And I'm like, I don't know. I can't get anybody to listen. So she started speaking up, and the school was like, no, we don't care. We really don't care. Because she would sit in a corner and stare at her, the classmates. She didn't know how to participate. Yep. She didn't talk, you know. And uh, she's like, I don't understand. Mm -hmm. So she worked with her. She got her to write her name and use scissors. And that's all she learned in kindergarten. She didn't learn her alphabet. Yeah. She didn't learn to count. And that was okay. And then as time went on, I, uh, that's when we all started clamoring for that IEP. And the school was like, no, she's fine. Come that third grade reading test, obviously, she didn't do very well. I mean, there's no pass fail on that for our state, but she didn't do very well. And uh, they're like, yeah, she didn't need an IP. She passed it. She got the bare minimum. She's fine. That's just setting kids up. Oh, well, and their reason was she's already slow. Why would we invest time and energy in her? Why would, why would we want her to succeed and do better? And then she literally failed fourth grade. She did. She couldn't even complete the assignments because she couldn't read them. Right. She and what she could read, her writing was so bad. The teacher so she would tell her answers verbally, which she did fine. Yeah. She was comfortable with that fourth grade teacher, but she couldn't even complete the assignments. She got an incomplete in fourth grade. You know what they did? Passed her to fifth. Mm. Our district passed her to fifth grade. That doesn't surprise me. Uh, it well, doesn't. no. Mm -mm. And and they were they were like well. But she passed the state reading test. And that's how they said it. Like as if I was some kind of a low life slug questioning my daughter's education because she was the way she is. And they're like, she passed it. What more do you want? I want my daughter to get an education. Maybe. Yeah. You know, do how, how to get help. Yeah. And <sighs> they were like, uh, she'll be fine. Come fifth grade. They, I went over everybody's heads. And I contacted the department, the yeah. special needs department. And within three days, she had an evaluation. And they discovered things that, to this day, they've never seen. Mm -hmm. There's no name for them. Yeah. They looked it up, and they're like, we don't even have a name for this diagnosis at all. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, because she, her short-term memory doesn't exist. Mm -hmm. uh, you could, She'll stand there, and I'll say, um, go get something out of the kitchen. She'll look at me and say, what'd you say? It won't even register. Yep. And we've tried like uh, ADHD meds. We've tried anxiety meds. The anxiety meds seem to help when yeah. she remembers to take them. But other than that, there's no, now she has an excellent long-term memory, but for her to verbalize her long-term memory, it can take her up to six days. Yeah. She'll tell it in the middle. She'll tell it at the beginning. She'll go back to the middle. Then she'll go to the end and you have to piece it together. Yep. And they've never seen that before. So I was like, okay, maybe it's autism. Maybe it's mm -hmm. this. So I took her to the big place over that way. And the same place we go for the hemophilia. And she missed the autism by one point. So you know what they told me? Just treat her like she's got autism and it'll be fine. But she's not autistic. One point. And they actually put that in her file. Not autistic, but mom will treat like has autism. You know how they learned that. Oh, yeah. So they gave her an intellectual disability instead. And that just shut all that off. And, there, and then when I said, no, no, wait a minute, does she have, well, yeah, we believe she's autistic, but according to the test, it doesn't count. I was like, but you just, she just lost all these resources. Yep. And they're like, what do you care about resources? Because she needs, she needs them. them. And they're like, oh, it's no big deal. She'll be fine. And that's literally, I got the hand away. She'll be fine. Ugh. And I'm sitting there like, man, if I wasn't a Christian woman. <laughs> Oh, my word. And I don't look good in stripes. I don't mind the bars, but I don't look good in stripes. And I really don't want to have uh, Karen over there telling me how to do my hair. So I sat there and I said, okay. <laughs> so I literally, see, I keep going out of camera here. I don't know. I'm here. See my hand. So, yeah. And after that, I just pretty much did what, what we could do. Yeah. And then by the time she got to middle school and high school, 
they were like, they literally told me in an IEP meeting, we're not going to give her an equal education. We're going to get her to do the bare minimum because that's what we believe she can handle. But we want her to be social and we are going to push the socialization. And I'm like, so wait a minute. So instead of her, her learning something that could help her get a job, well, yeah, we expect her to get a job. But we're not going to give her an education to get the job. We're going to teach her that it's important to do your hair and your makeup and socialize with people rather than life skills. And I'm like, okay, well, and at the time they had a life skills class, you know, yeah. cooking, basic mm -hmm. stuff, cooking, finances, just little things. It wasn't like our whole mat class, yeah. but it was something basic. And I said, could she have that? No, she can't. She don't need that. She doesn't need to learn how to do her finances. She needs to learn how to go make friends because that's all she's going to do. And I'm like, wait a minute, what are you talking about? Well, if you wanted to learn how to do finances, you teach her. But I can't teach her if you guys don't teach her math. Exactly. And they're like, well, then you teach her. And that's what they, we just kept working around yeah. in that circle. And I was like, then what's the point of her having an IEP? Well, she qualifies for one. I was like, oh, so basically you get the paycheck. You get the paycheck. And I get yep. the work. And you guys sit here and, and act like she's not worth anything. Well, while well, she was working at the, this new restaurant, mm -hmm. the lady that did her IEP, the one that told us all this, she went through the drive through and she knew that the Midland worked mm -hmm. over at the other restaurant. Well, she now came to this restaurant and she saw her working over here and she goes, and she literally told her, she says, so you've had to get a second job. And the Midland was like, no, I had an adult situation that my mom and I handled together. And I left that job because I didn't want to be treated like that. Yep. And she said, the lady dropped her mouth and she goes, in other words, you just couldn't tough out a job. She goes, I told you, you couldn't do anything with your life. And the manager was standing right there and she goes, ma'am, can I help you? You're a bit rude to my employee here. What's your problem? And then, oh, of course, Cheyenne goodness. walked away. But that was her IEP person after all these years. And the last two years, three years, two years, she wasn't even in the school system. here. She was being homeschooled with her yeah. mother. And I got her to graduate three months early. With a C and D average. There you go. She moved up from all F's to C's and D's this minute I started homeschooling. Yeah. And it worked. So a lot of people don't see COVID as a blessing, but in this household it was. Yeah. Because we were able to take a step back from the world mm -hmm. and regroup and focus on what was important. And that's what taught us what was important was not what necessarily is out there other than friends yep. and certain things, but what was here. So... And then with him, it's just been an absolute struggle because when he was diagnosed November 19th of 2019 and on the way home, I got a phone call that and uh, he had spit in the kid's tray. I was like, he don't even talk to his classmates. Why would he spit? Come to find out that was the kid that was bullying him that the school was forgiving. The school was like, well, you're a bad kid, Ping. He's a bad kid. So it's okay that he does that to you. Mm -mm. Ping stood up and said, no, it ain't. And they're like, oh, you got a sass mouth. Get to the office. Mm -mm. He was punched. Uh, he was pinched. And the student was, and this, it was a group, small group of students, but it was usually the same one. And they're like, well, but he, he bleeds funny. We want to see him bleed. And the teacher was like, oh, well, that makes sense. And walked away. Uh, I scared an electric worker one day by yelling at the principal of the school over here. Mm -hmm. They, uh, the couple of neighbors he got a goose egg on his head, and the rule was, you know, because of the hemophilia, call me if it doesn't grow out. Well, it grew out, so he called me, and he said, well, I'm calling you about the goose egg on his head. I'm like, okay, did you put ice on it? Did you follow it? Well, no, why would we follow anything you want? Just He goes, at least it wasn't as bad as the punch to his chest, and I went, no, wait a minute. Say that again. He goes, yeah, about two hours ago, David got punched in the chest on the playground. Oh, nice. And he goes, but I didn't see any bleeding. I was like, wait a minute. You didn't see with your eyeballs any internal bleeding? And the principal was like, no, I didn't see any. It's all good. The goose egg is what's worrying me. I'm like, do you, I mean, I pause like this. And I'm, like, I'm thinking to myself, I was like, do you, do you understand hemophilia? Do you understand internal bleeding? Like, yeah. I was like, so now you're Superman with x-ray vision. He's like, no, and you don't have to be rude. I'm like, I'm rude. I was like, dude, you could have just killed my kid. Yeah. He goes, but I didn't see any bleeding outside. I was like, again, internal bleeding, not it's visible, not how dude. That works. So I had to explain, and I got loud. And I was across the street at another neighbor's house in the backyard. 
there was an electrical lineman. He got down off the line and came and knocked on their door. And he's like, is that lady okay? <laughs> Three other neighbors came out and they're like, is mama okay? <laughs> and the lady that lived there at the time, she's like, no, there's something bad that just happened and she's handling it. But she was over here helping me with something. I went straight up to that school. Mm -hmm. He developed a bruise on his chest and it could have killed him. Yep. And they were more worried about a goose egg. And then over the course of time, I kept saying, you know, he, he's autistic. There's, he's got ADHD. There's something else, you know, because like I said, mom's guts. Yep. Come on. Why does anybody doubt mom's guts? Why do you guys mom doubt mommy's guts? <laughs> we're the ones, you know? And uh, they're like, oh, no, he's just a bad kid. He was eating lunch alone. And I got pictures of this. I snuck. I didn't sneak into the school. I got in there under a white lie. And I took pictures of him. He ate lunch alone for six months. Aww. Six months. And they told me, oh, no, it was only for two days. I got in and got pictures. Second, I showed them, I, I said, okay, well, the feds already have a copy of these pictures. And they're like, what? He went back to eat lunch with his friends. But they kept him alone next to a center block wall. And I got the pictures. To prove it because I got in there. And they, of course, they let me in. Yeah. But I got through. And they, they weren't happy. And after that, they said, well, we're going to trespass you. And I was like, by law, you can't. You have my student. Yep. And they're like, well, we can do whatever we want. I said, mm, not, if it no, not if it violates my parental rights, not if it violates my constitutional rights, and not if you have custody of my kid during these hours. And so we'll call the police. So I called the police myself. I stood right in front of that vice principal, and I called the number, and I said, uh, my, this is my name. And I'm at X number school. I said, they're trying to trespass me because I caught them abusing my son. Can they trespass me from this building during school hours? And the dispatcher was like, uh, I mean, I scared her apparently. She's like, let's talk to the desk sergeant. So I talked to the desk yep. sergeant on speakerphone. And of course, there was like three or four teachers and they were all standing around. We talked to the desk sergeant and they and he said only if I caused a pro like a visible problem that disturbed other parents or other students, could mm -hmm. they then trespass me? And only for that. If there was an emergency, me being the caregiver, they couldn't. I said, well, they have my son. And I said, there's about 30 people standing in this office, parents, students, and teachers and administrators. I was like, and I shouted real loud. I said, am I disturbing anybody? Every parent chimed up and said, no, because we're curious too. Oh. And I said, and he said, well, those are the only reasons I can trespass you from the school. Now, granted, if you're watching this, this is our area. This may not apply to your state, your area, your district. Okay. So don't take that as mama Narwhal said this. Okay. <laughs> Just a disclaimer here for legality purposes, because I'm legal. I'm illegal at something, I'll tell you. And anyway, <laughs> and he said, yeah, as long as I behave myself, even if I get angry, they cannot trespass mm -hmm. me because they have my kid. And he has special needs. Yep. And that vice principal was not happy about that. She got demoted because, Good. well, she got investigated by the state due to me. And they found that she was breaking state and federal laws. Mm -hmm. And they demoted her, moved her to a different building. And now she don't even work for the district. And I was like, yeah, don't don't mess with me. I, I guess maybe I should have called myself the mama bear. Maybe. Well, then again, I did poke him. <laughs> <laughs> I need to make me a horn to wear for when, for when I'm angry, you know, doing an angry stream going, mm, you know. I might have a unicorn no. headband. Oh, that would work. I'm going to have to look. Well, I, I wanted to do it black, with make it look like, because, you know, I'm, I'm a closet goth. I'm old closet guy. I'm original. I'm, what is that? OG or an OG? Thank you. Yeah, an see, OG. She, see, she's up on all that. I don't know. <laughs> Does it involve like quilting from 1800s when I was born? Oh. That's about the extent I know. So, what's your biggest fight you ever had? Mm. If you want to share it, I mean, you don't have to share it. You can. I don't, I I fight with them still. I mean, they won't provide speech or OT. Mm. Yeah. And I mean, I fight with them all the time. Yeah. I threaten to pull in from school all the time. I did that with the Midland. You know what they told me? Well, we'll call the police and children's services on you. So that's why she was never homeschooled. Because I was thinking, if they're not going to do it, I'm going to do it. Yep. And then it was always that threat, you know. And then, of course, with my anxiety, as bad as it is, I would yep. panic. But then at one point, I just said, no, I got to do this. I Anxiety or not. And if they show up, they show up. Let them show up. Yeah. I mean, life may be a mess, but it's a mess for a reason. It's not because I'm lazy. It's because, you know, autism and ADHD and even the schizophrenia, that, that stuff takes hours. Oh, yeah. It's not like it's a one and done and my shift is over and I get to go home and the second shift comes in. No, if that means dinner's late because dad is just struggling really bad to function, mm -hmm. 
and he need, he deserves that help too. He deserves that help. And then yep. when they both kind of ta- you know group up because it's just so much for them yep. to handle each other, you know. Mm-hmm. And that's one thing a lot of people don't understand. And th- just the massive amount of when one has issues, it just kind of flows through the family. Oh yeah, yeah. And a lot, and you know, a lot of well, but just separate them more. They give advice, and I did a stream on unsolicited advice. You take it with grace. You take it with a yeah. grain of salt. You know, I mean, when he was diagnosed with the hemophilia, everybody was like, "Give him kale," and I went, "Uh, okay, but kale doesn't solve genetically no. given." But okay, I, and I thought that to myself. I wasn't yeah. facetious. I wasn't rude. I said, "Oh, that's a great idea." You know, I you take it with a grain of salt. You take it mm-hmm. with that they don't know the details thing. Yeah. And then there's other times where you just get such bad advice that you have to correct it before they, you know, but I do it. Yeah. I do it respectfully. I'm like, well, that might be great for somebody else, but for us, that really that's, doesn't yeah. work. And that's usually the statement I use. I don't go any mm-hmm. further than that. And they still get offended and be like, Oh, well, you're a broom. <laughs> Which, and I'm like, yeah, my broomstick's parked out there in the parking lot, but I'm just trying to be nice to you so you don't look like a fool in front of somebody else. But you want to be a fool, you go be a you fool. You go right on ahead. Yeah, I ain't going to control you. I ain't even going to bother. Nope, you go right you, on ahead. Yep. Have at it, Kyle. Kyle, Karen. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you should see what I named the animals. I mean, Flufina. Uh, Osbert's back there in the corner. I, I'll introduce him later. Oh, wait. Hold on. Can I reach her? I think I can reach her. I'll I'll introduce you guys to Henrietta. Nope, I can't reach her. I'm old. Oh, and of course, the legs ain't working. There we are. There. Oh, I still have a sticker on. Oh, look, you can see Osbert. He's right there. He's there. right there. He's asleep. He's taking a nap. <laughs> you know, all men take naps. Anyway, this is Henrietta. She's soon going to have her own tank and some gravel. Sorry. Oh. I had to relocate my hips. I have ehlers danlos Syndrome. Oh, okay. I don't know if you're familiar with that. My joints decide to go on vacation without me. Aww. They randomly pop out. It uh, the collagen disorder. And mm. 100% of our bodies, our muscles, our brains, our hearts are made out of collagen. Yep. Not just our skin. And what happens is the collagen breaks down and therefore my muscles break down. Mm-hmm. Uh, I get brain fogs. Uh, I, you know, I get, I'm starting to get issues with my heart. Because my body just doesn't produce it. Yeah. And I mean, I can dislocate the shoulder and pop it back in. Like complete dislocation. Ooh. And it, I can pop it right back in and there's no pain. Oh. My hips, like I'll be walking and all of a sudden my hip will pop. Mm-hmm. And my hip will dislocate itself in the middle of Walmart. Oh my goodness. So sometimes I'm in a wheelchair. Mm-hmm. And here lately, I haven't been. Because I felt a little better. But, you know. I'm starting to get some of those aches and pains. Mm. Um, and there's some days where I have to crawl around on the floor and clean my house. I, I pull myself up or whatever. And then other days, my legs work just fine as if I don't have anything. Yeah. So that's my that's one of my biggest issues of that and my anxiety. But yeah. So that's why I have all these lovely non-furry friends. This is Henrietta. Everybody say hello to Henrietta. She's, she's my friend. She's going, I'm going to get her a tank and some rocks. That way she's not so lonely. And then I'm going to find another fish. We're going to put her right there. There we are. Ah, there she. Oh, she hides the mess. Lovely. She does well. Do the, oh, well. Ignore the screws. It's, it's, well, it's okay. She got. At some point, we're all held together with glue and duct tape. That's true. So, but yeah, that's uh, that's IEPs, man. They're a mess. They need to be fixed big time. I'm telling you. Yes, they. From do. not, and I know a lot of teachers and administrators. They. They also feel the same way. And then yep. you got some that are just like in it for the money and they're just like, eh, these kids ain't going to be worth anything. Well, of course not. Look at the, what you're doing. Look at what you're doing. Yeah. And then you got a teacher like the Midlands. She had two good teachers that fought for her. Yep. And they made a, they scratched the surface and made a difference. But then when they were gone after that year, they were gone. Yeah. yeah. And it doesn't get them back. Nope. And that was, you know, a big, that, would, that was a big hurt to her. Because they were in her corner and they supported her. Um, does yours have teachers and staff like that that support them a little? Kind of. Kind of. Yeah. Yeah. They get new teachers all the time. Oh, it's like yeah. a revolving door. Yeah. Yeah. They and, get used to somebody and then they're gone. And and, see, and that's what that's what bothers me mm-hmm. is when you tell them my kid does better with a routine. This yeah. is better with this. 
you know, and they're like, okay, well, we don't do that. And then you turn around and this other parent says, well, my kid gets this and this. And you're like, and it's accommodated. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's like, wait a minute, if your kid gets this and this, and I asked for this and this, but I was told they don't do how are you doing it? Mm -hmm. But you don't want to say anything and be that rude Karen or that rude person. Yeah. So you just kind of suffer in silence. And I, that drives me nuts. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, I, I stand up for things. I even stand, I stand up for other people. But at the same time, it's like, why? Why why is this not working Yep. when it's working for somebody else? But, I, and honestly, I think they pick and choose. They do. Which, I mean, yeah, I know, I, I know they do. But mm, they do. But you got to stop and think at some point, why? What's mm -hmm. the reason behind that? Yep. You know, and it can't be the money because if they're the, having the same things on paper as somebody else has on paper, then it would be the same amount of money. Yep. What I personally think it is, and this is my personal opinion, another disclaimer, money. Yep. Personal money. Oh, yeah. Because if that child comes from what appears to be a wealthy family and mm -hmm. always wearing good clothes, and then you get my family who, you know, and it don't mean we're poor. That just means we choose a different lifestyle. Yep. Oh, but you're different. You don't fit into society, so you don't get the same. Well, why do you think we're like this? It's because we don't get the same thing, so we have to put everything we have yep. into getting this or this piece of equipment or this piece of And they're like, well, but you're different. Yeah, and? Okay. And that's the other reason why I kind of started doing these live streams is because not that I want to normalize all of my opinions are all, all of our lifestyle because it is unique to us. But I want people to understand that just because somebody's different doesn't mean that we're completely different and should be ostracized from right, society. Exactly. And yeah. that's, and, and I get that. I'm, I'm sure you get it too. When you mm -hmm. go places, well, why can't you just get them to act like this? Mm -hmm. Because we, that's what we approve of, well, yep. but he's not going to do, so, do that. So we'll, we'll compromise. We'll meet halfway. That's why I'm teaching pain. You know, it's okay to stem. It's okay to do certain yep. things when you're at home, but when you're out in public and you have to stem or you have to, because he loves uh, for his ADHD, he's a cat with wings. Mm -hmm. So he does this, right? Yep. No big deal. And he'll do that. And then people will be like, you know, what, what? Mm -hmm. we ignore him because he's not bothering anybody. He's not destroying yep. property. He's not making noise. It's just, he's making different movements. And that's yep. one of the biggest things of autism and ADHD, mm -hmm. the movements. But everybody's like, oh, my God, he's not moving like my child did. He's not moving like that kid over there. And they have a problem with it. Oh, yeah. And it's like, okay, so we embrace our differences. We yeah. don't flaunt them. We don't throw them in people's faces. And we don't do it overtly like to cause scenes. But I say, okay, if you've got a stem, mm -hmm. do it gently. Yep. You know, make sure we don't bother other people. Mm -hmm. And then if he's got to make noise, he'll do it as silently. He'll go, nah. You know, mm -hmm. and when we get in the car, then he unleashes it. <laughs> and then they're riding the parking lot. like, oh, my God, my car's dying. Um, you know, <laughs> he's still sitting over here laughing about that. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so we're we're teaching him, you know, to express himself that way. And it's working. You yep. know, he's not, you know, and he's happy with that. And mm -hmm. it's working. And our the way we do things may not work for yours, you know, yep. it, and that's what's unique and awesome about this journey yeah. is that we can all work together within the special needs community, but we can also take a stand together and say, you know, yep. just because we're different doesn't mean you can't invite us moms to your little coffee clutch. Now, mm -hmm. will we go? Maybe not because I don't like coffee clutches. <laughs> I mean, you, but you know what I mean? You I know know, what you don't mean. I know don't you invite mean. us just to get the gossip about our diseases. Come, yeah. Invite us because we're moms and yeah, we need that 10 minutes, you know? Yep. And uh, that's why I think this would be a great collab mm -hmm. every so often when we can, because, you know, we can get together and they have your perspective. They have my perspective yep. and they're not going to be the same. They're not, yep. you know, and I, that's why when you when we started talking about this, we are neighbors, by the way. It's not like she came from, you know, <laughs> Minnesota or something. We're, we're actually neighbors. Yeah. Which is actually kind of scary for the neighborhood to have two people with massive access to uh, social media. Um, anyway, uh, maybe for the one, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's, it's Don't just, and Pink just made his YouTube debut by making noise. Awesome, dude. Thank you for sharing. No, you're all right, honey. 
I usually have them be quiet so that way it's not too disturbing okay. to the viewers. But you know what? You're all good. Yeah. Maybe. Oh, and that got the bird. <laughs> that got the flapping. Um, but yeah. Now I have this in my pants. So yeah, I just do things at random. I'm distracted and you should see me play games. It looks bad. <laughs> I start out with one, like in Minecraft, I've been doing it for two months now and I still haven't, I just now put a roof on my house. <laughs> I used to play The Sims. <gasps> I love this. I used to have all of it for my, my yes. laptop, all, the main and the expansion mm -hmm. packs. <gasps> I didn't like playing it so much as I like building. Yeah. I love the, like build the building stuff. Yeah. We have it on our computer. <gasps> Where? Well, you know what? If I get it when I get a game, not if, because if is not an option in this world. When I get a gaming computer, it's gonna be set up in here. Mm -hmm. I'll get the Sims, and we can collab on that too. Yeah, we can because we have a gaming computer. Mm. Our tower's like this big. <gasps> well, mine won't be that big, but I'm at least gonna have Minecraft and like a few other games on there, and then I'm gonna do Steam. I'm gonna do Steam games because they Justin's got Justin's cousin built this. Oh, from wow. scratch. Oh yeah, yeah. He built this thing. It I used like, to, I used to do that. I got a degree in computers. Do you? Yeah. Uh, when I when I was six years old, back in the 1800s, 1700s actually, uh, computers didn't come the way you see them today. Mm -hmm. I had a computer program on a cassette tape. Yep. And it didn't work. My dad bought it from the you know some local uh, hardware parts for computers. And uh, went home and assembled it. The program didn't work. At six years old, I fixed it. I went in and rewrote the code. Mm -hmm. And because we had told the store and said, you know, we're struggling with this. It's not working. And they're like, try this, try this. I was like, no, that's just, I went in there, jailbroke it and rewrote the code. It was, it was a little kid's game for that famous show on PBS. The one that taught them how to ABCs and the numbers. Okay. Um... It had all the puppets. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. It was a game from that show. Yes. And, uh, but I fixed it. And it worked for years at six. And then ever since then, I, it don't, I'm starting to slow down a little bit because I kind of got away from it. Yeah. But 99% of the time, if you give me time, I can fix anything hardware, software related with a computer, even at this age. But I only got the associate's degree. And I went to get a job in that field. And they're like, yeah, you have all this experience and you're great but you don't have the paper to back it up. And I'm like, but I just did your IT job. Well, yeah. And we thank you for that. And thanks for doing it for free, but we're not going to hire you. You guys so I went got a degree and they still wouldn't hire me because it's an old boy almonds work. Mm -hmm. And I outdid some, I, I even went up to that store up here on this one street and I can't say it because it's probably yeah. right. Uh, with the big yellow tag. Oh yeah. Yeah. And they would, that little IT group in there, mm -hmm. they, would, they wouldn't hire me because the manager was afraid I was going to take his job. <laughs> and I was like, but I don't want your job. I don't want your job. Well, I might take the job above you, but I don't want your job. And he's like, well, you're too good. I don't want to hire you. But then 99% of the com computers that that group fixed, people would call me and say, yeah, I just got back from this group. Can you come fix it? Because there's something wrong with it. Yep. And I'd go in and fix it in under 15 minutes. And I'd charge less than 100 bucks. And they're like, wow, you're a lot cheaper. So I even started a little side hustle with that. Yeah. You know, and everybody, and then everybody got mad at me. And I'm like, get mad at them. They're the one charging you like 40 bucks an hour and still can't oh, fix yeah. your stuff. Yeah. One lady, she found questionable things on hers. They put it on there because they were, oh, well, we can erase. They forgot to erase it after they were looking it up on her computer. Oh, that's nice. And she was an elderly lady. She was like. I don't, she, she looked at me like this and she goes, I don't know what's on that. <laughs> and I was going through there and I'm going, I don't know what it is either. And I'm just delete, but I had to look at every, all of it because I had to go. I don't want to see it. Yeah. Well, I, but I didn't want to erase the pictures of oh, her yeah. grandkids, but it was all mixed together. So I'm going, yeah, okay. <laughs> you know, I mean, I, I just did. I'm no stranger to that world, but that made me uncomfortable. And I'm going, oh my God, I didn't know the human body could take that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Payne lately has discovered his sense of humor and it's awesome. Oh. It's awesome. Shh, don't now I'm getting oh. shushy. Well, yes, we're gonna have to do this again. Yes, we are. I don't even know. Yeah. Oh, it's been an hour. Yeah, we're pretty I good. Know. I know. Yeah, you gotta go home and check on that. Thing. I gotta let my dog out. He's yeah. probably destroyed my house. He, he eats my mail. Why does he eat the mail? I don't know. And we have one of those 
letter shoot. Yeah. And then it goes through into a basket. Okay. And he pulls my mail out and eats it. <laughs> well, at least he's not eating your shoes. No, he's done that. Oh. Hate my oven mitt. I'd buy a new one. An oven mitt? Yeah, those things have a lot of fuzz on them. Ooh, ooh, yeah. It was strung throughout my house. Does he eat toilet paper? No. He hasn't got toilet paper. Really? That's nope. shocking. I, Dakota used to eat crayons and Barbie shoes. And aluminum downspouts. Well, he's not done that yet. Mm-hmm. And I say yes. Yeah. Wait till you get to pull it out the other end when it gets stuck and it's just dangling there. Um, You've already done that, haven't you? Mm-hmm. Yeah, okay. Yeah. We'll both put our heads down for this It was one. traumatizing. Yes, it was. Not just for the dog either. Mm. You know, you get that look of, oh. I tried to make Justin do it and he was like, mm-hmm. Well, that's when you... Yeah. After a while, though, you just get used to it, and you just punch them up, and you go, okay, Whatever, really slow. Go. Yeah, yeah. Because I'd have the girls come to me and go, Mom, my, my Barbie's missing this one boot. And I'd look at Dakota, and he'd be like, mm-hmm. <laughs> So, yeah. Yeah, we will definitely get together and do this yes. again. And uh, if you're watching the replay, it's A-Ray on Instagram. I keep wanting to say Instagram. I'm on TikTok. 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 It's She's Hey, all... it's A Ray. Hey, it's A Ray. I'll get that. It's got three Y's. Three Y's. There you go. You heard her. <laughs> she can explain all of that Tiki Talk stuff. I'll do the YouTube and the old lady stuff. How's that? Um, and I'm the Mama Narwhal. And we'll probably do this again soon. But both our lives are really active and we're actually we're actually really good friends and neighbors, but we get to text message each other maybe once a week and say, hey, how you doing? Oh, we're doing all right. And then that's it. <laughs> yeah, we're so busy <laughs> that it's like, oh, I hear her. She's, you know, she's in her yard. I can hear her. She's doing fine. She's breathing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm there. Yeah. Or I hear the kids playing, you know, and I'm like, oh, yeah, kids are fine. <laughs> they're fine. They're over there. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, this was fun. This was, was really fun. fun. Let's do it again. Let's. Yes, let's. In two weeks. Two weeks. All right. Maybe we could do it. we could do it around the same time or a little bit later, even if you want to. Yep. You just let me know. Just text me. Okay. Okay. Maybe next week I'll have everybody set up and everything will be better. Or it'll still be the same mess it is because, you know, life happens and it explodes. So, all right. Well, it was good seeing you folks. Enjoy the replay. TikTok. Oh, I got it right. And YouTube. Bye.